In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about using getters and setters on JavaScript objects to change the interface of those objects. So let's start with a simple example. I'm going to have a player for a game and the player has a name a total lives property, which I'm going to set to be five and a total deaths property, which I'm going to set to be zero. So they start out with five lives and then each time they die, this increments, meaning their lives remaining goes down by one each time. So I'll also create a die method that just increases the total deaths by one. And now I have this player object that I can use in my application. I can console log the player.totaldeaths. I could then tell the player to die. I could then console log the player.totaldeaths again. And this should start with zero deaths and then I tell it to die and it goes up by one. So this works as expected. Uh, but what if instead of seeing the total lives or the total deaths, I really just want to see the lives that are remaining. I just want to be able to call player.lives and see how many lives I have left. And up here I have the definition of the player object where it is created and down here I'm using the player object. Uh, and currently these are in the same file, but these could be in separate files or in different libraries or whatever. Um, and down here... I'm really thinking about the interface of this player object, how I interact, how this code interacts with the player object. So it can interact through its properties here and I can access its uh, total deaths, for example, I can tell it to die, but I really want the interface of this object to have a lives property that just tells me how many lives are remaining, not the total lives, not the total deaths, but the number of lives remaining. And I could really just calculate this on the fly. I could say the player.totaldeaths minus, wait, no, the player total lives minus the player dot total deaths would be the number of lives remaining but i don't want this from the perspective of the code that is actually using the player object i want it to be simpler i want the player object to have a dot lives property so what i could do is create a lives method that returns uh this dot total lives minus this dot total deaths and then that's a little bit nicer because now I don't have to perform this logic out here. The object does it for me, which I think the object should do this for me anyway. Um, so now I can see, print out the lives. Uh, so we should have five lives and the player dies and then we should have four lives. Okay, that works, that's quite nice. But I don't really like that this is a method call. It feels like it should just be a value that exists on the object, just like uh, the length of an array is dot length on the array and it's just a value, I don't have to call it as a method. This feels like I'm performing extra logic and you know, it's just a preference thing, but I don't like it. I would like to just be able to call dot lives for this to have a value. Here. And I can achieve this by creating a getter on the object. And the syntax for that is just get followed by the name uh, and then open and close parentheses just as if it were a function. But from the outside world, from the things that are using this object, it looks and feels as though it's just a normal value, as though it's a number in this case. So I can call this and the behavior should still be the same. I get five lives, then four lives after dying. But I get to treat this as if it is just a value and not a method. And this is kind of nice because the code that is using the player object doesn't know any of the implementation details about how lives is actually calculated. It's just using it as if it were any other property. And this is the separation of the interface of the code and the actual implementation details of how things are run. The things using the player object think that it's just a value but under the hood, it's actually a computed value that's computed every single time I call dot lives. This code will be executed each time and it'll be calculated every single time. Uh, and we can go one step further. We can actually create setters too. So I can have a setter for lives, uh, which will have a value. So I'll just call this uh, new lives. And this will get called anytime I want to set the lives. So for example, I can say player dot lives equals uh, two. And even though this seems like I'm just setting a value directly, it's going to execute the logic within these curly braces right here. So I can do whatever I want with that value. I could just console log it out, do nothing with it. Um, but what I'll actually do is I will set the total deaths equal to the total lives 
uh, new lives minus the total lives. I think that's right. Yeah, okay. So then the total deaths, uh, in this case, once I set lives to be two, the total deaths would be three. That means that every time I call dot lives to, to read the value, uh, it should get the right value. And again, this seems like I'm just setting a value to be two here, but what I'm actually doing uh, under the hood, behind the scenes in this object is I'm setting uh, a completely different value to be something else. But then later on, when I calculate the lives property, it will end up working out as if I had just set the lives. So this should go five, four, and then it should be two. No, because I did my math the wrong way round because this will give a negative value and it's late and I meant to do it this way. Okay, all right, <laughs> that's it going bad. So now, yeah, there we go. So when I set the lives, it will actually set those values correctly. And this might not seem like a huge deal. You know, I could just have a property called lives that I update every single time, or I could just not even have a lives property and you just have to figure out what the number of lives are by subtracting the deaths from the total lives. But this is a nice feature that exists in JavaScript that we can use to create the interface that we want, the interface that we wanna be used when we're actually using our objects, uh, but our implementation details can be more complex than that. We can add whatever implementation details we need here and just expose a nice interface for the rest of our code to use.